Thank you, Madam Chairman, and um, thank the panel for being here today and for your service to our country. In February um, 2014, this year, the Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, started out uh, testifying before the Senate Armed Services Committee by saying, looking back over my now more than half a century in intelligence, I've not experienced a time when we've been beset by more crisis and threats around the globe. Two days ago, we have a staff meeting on fly-in day, and I shared a video with my staff of, it was an ISIS-produced video, but it showed young Iraqi men loaded in the back of pickup trucks and dump trucks taken out into the desert and murdered. Hundreds of Iraqis. It hearkened times of Pol Pot and Cambodia and the Holocaust to watch those images that were disturbing of men shot multiple times to make sure they were dead as they laid in the trench. This is a real threat. We may not think as Americans that, that we may not be interested in Islamic extremism and ISIS and the establishment of a caliphate, but I'll tell you what, ISIS is interested in America and they're interested in you. In June, I traveled to Europe on a CODEL I led. I couldn't get many members of Congress interested in going. We were looking at border security and foreign fighter flow in June. If I was to have that same congressional delegation trip today, I would have to turn members away because the plane wouldn't be big enough to travel to Europe to meet with our allies about foreign fighter flow. I grew up during the Cold War. Nation-state versus nation-state, tracking the movements of tanks and large number of troops along different borders in mainly Eastern Europe. We're not tracking troop movement or tank movement today. We're tracking individuals, foreign fighters who leave not only European countries but this country to travel to fight jihad, oftentimes being radicalized and coming back possibly to the United States of America, to create and uh, commit heinous crimes. Is that a far-fetched idea? Well, before I left to travel to Brussels, a young man who had traveled to Syria through Turkey came back through Germany. Germany tracked his movements but failed to let the allies within Europe know about this individual. He entered Brussels. He shot up a Jewish museum. At least three, if not four, individuals were killed. Have you heard about that on the mainstream media in this country? Probably not. I know about it because I was headed to Brussels and it was on our radar screen. But this was a, a jihadist fighter who radicalized, came back to Brussels, shot up a Jewish museum, killed individuals, and tried to flee back to North Africa through France. Was caught at a bus stop. Free travel. Schengen region in Europe. Free travel among those countries. No border crossings. Guess what? They're visa waiver countries as well. If they didn't know that individual had actually traveled to Syria and become radicalized, if he would, a country that was part of the visa waiver program, traveled back to his country unbeknownst to the United States personnel, had a valid travel document, possibly could have boarded an aircraft and flown to this country. We need to be concerned about that. We also need to be concerned about Americans, we now have identified a number that have traveled over to um, fight with ISIS, whether it's in Syria or Iraq or the Islamic State and whatever it looks like going forward. We should be able to revoke the passports of United States citizens if they do travel to fight for another organization. In fact, U.S. law under, um, section, uh, I guess it's Section 8 U.S.C. 1481 says that um, a U.S. citizen shall lose his nationality by voluntarily performing any of the following acts, entering or serving in the armed forces of a foreign state. Now, there is a part of the law that says with the intention of relinquishing United States nationality. Maybe we need to strike that in a future law. But if you go on and committing any act of treason against or attempting to force overthrow or bearing arms against the United States, that's exactly what ISA, ISIS and ISIL have said. If you go on to other laws, we can revoke a United States passport if the secretary receives certification from a state agency that an individual owes arrears of child support in excess of $2,500. We can revoke their passport just because they don't pay child support. 
But you can't tell me we're going to revoke the passports of people that are going to fight with people in ISIS that have said, we're coming to the White House. We're going to fly that black ISIS al-Qaeda flag over the White House who have made threats to the United States, who have beheaded two American journalists. But we can revoke the passport if they fail to pay their child support. Secretary shall issue um, the passport. Let's, let's go on and say Supreme Court's Interpretative Passport Act 1926. It gives broad powers to the secretary to revoke a passport when necessary for national security purposes. We need to revoke the passports of these Americans that have gone. We need to keep them from reentering the United States when we know who they are. And we need to understand, America, the challenges of tracking individuals, foreign fighters, and as they flow around the world through even some ally countries, where they end up. Madam Chairman, this is an apropos committee hearing. I hope this isn't the last one. Uh, we've got a lot of threats facing our country.